this is Estina from Color Killer Crochet. I hope you're doing great and welcome to my crochet lace kimono cardigan. So this is the lace. This is an easy difficulty pattern. There is not much going on even though it looks like there is. Is just two types of lace made with just two kinds of stitches. What more can you ask for? <laughs> and I like to work with a large hook. Um, so this is my my kind of lace, large hook, uh, fast and easy to make, um, thick yarn. I like acrylic yarn, I have to say, because it's easy maintenance, it's lightweight, that's my favorite features. Um, and I've always wanted to make lace, but lace always seems so complicated, but uh, definitely not this. This is made just with uh, half double crochets and double crochets. These little lace uh, rows look a bit like ribbons sometimes when you twist it but you know they're pretty uh, you cross over the double crochets and that's what creates it and there is no uh, ribbing and um, no separate sleeves to make so you make just three pieces one large back piece and um, two front pieces and Instead of ribbing, we have this kind of lace trim. So I'm using Lime Brand Runner's Choice in pink. I'm using large hook, 9mm hook. And this pattern is a multiple of 3. And the uh, stitch count is base chain minus 1. So say we make, I make 15. So I just want to give you an overview of the types of rows that, that you'll need to crochet. So this is your main uh, back piece and when you make your row uh, one, uh, you are as you're making it, you're facing the front of the work. And then you have rows two and three and you repeat rows two and three. and the, um, for the amount of rows that tells you in the pattern and you that means you've completed your bottom section and now you're on to the top section so once you complete the bottom section uh, the pattern will tell you to chain a certain amount of chains and then you are uh, making row the Throughout this pattern, I have named the rows, I've numbered the rows to signify what kinds of, what types of rows you can find in the pattern. And I want to show you what each kind of row looks like. So once you've chained a certain amount of chains, then you uh, make row four, row number four. And... Uh, um, one different thing about row four is that uh, you end, you crochet to the top of chain two, and it it's not a double crochet. Uh, the last stitch of the row is top of chain two, and it's you're crocheting to the skip stitch just before the two double crochets so no double crochet at the end of the row here and then the pattern will instruct you to chain again an, a certain amount of chains and then you're making a row number five and um, once you complete it then you are making row six and you're repeating row six for the amount of rows that the pattern tells you. 
So this is your back piece complete and you fasten up. Then you're going to be making your uh, front piece uh, on the left, your left front piece. So you chain a certain amount of chains to begin with and you take the same steps to make um, the bottom section. And once you do that, you, the pattern tells you to chain a certain amount of chains and then the row number 7 begins. And you do get a double crochet in the last stitch in this row, and then you repeat row six again uh, for the amount of uh, rows that it tells you, and you fasten off. And for the right um, front piece, again, um, we complete the bottom section uh, like before, and now we're making row two but we're actually skipping crocheting to the top of chain three and we're not making the last um, double crochet and the last stitch and instead we're chain because it's easier and we're chaining a certain amount of chains and we're making row five and this and um then we're repeating row six until we have a certain amount of rows as it tells you and um the way you know how many rows you've made in the uh, bottom section is you end with this row a row of half double crochets and this is the end of your bottom section and the way you know how many rows uh, to make uh, in the top section it tells you uh, for example to make 14 rows it for example it tells you repeat row 6 until you have 14 rows in the top section counting on the right when facing the front so this is the front um, because we know because of these ridges it looks slightly different on the other side but also because we established that the front is uh, the same side when we make row one so counting from the top um, we need to make 14 rows so we're counting these rows so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four so that's how you know. So we start with the back piece. So row one is half double crochet to third chain from hook one, two, three. A half double crochet in next stitch and every stitch and turn. So row two is uh, chain three and this counts as a double crochet and skip crocheting in the same stitch double crochet front loop only in the next stitch twice because we want these ridges so skipping the same stitch double crochet front loop only in the next stitch in the next stitch and double crochet front loop only in the skipped stitch so all we're doing is we're um, completing the double crochet here it just happens to be over these two um, double crochets so again skip next stitch double crochet front loop only in the next stitch twice And double crochet front loop only in the skipped stitch. Repeat. So when it comes to the end of the row, you will have one stitch left, and that's this one, and then you have the chain two. So just make a double crochet front loop only in 
the last stitch. So row two complete. Now row three is chain two, turn, and this counts as half double crochet. Skip crocheting in the same stitch and half double crochet back up only in the next stitch and in every stitch to create the additional ridges. At the end of the row, you need to make a half double crochet to the top of chain 3. So I also pick up the back loop because I have been in the row, so just pick up not both loops but just uh, one loop of the top of chain 3. So now all you need to do is repeat rows 2 and 3 until you have a certain amount of rows that it tells you and then and that will be your bottom section complete. So when you complete the bottom section you find yourself at the facing the same um, the front of the work just like I am now and uh, at the end of the same kind of row uh, half double crochet back up only row and next so the pattern tells you your bottom section is complete and then it tells you to it informs you that you're ma you're progressing on to making the top section, which is just a slightly different kind of lace, but it's the same pattern um, as this row. So now we're it will tell you to without breaking the yarn to chain a certain amount of chains, which will be a multiple of. 3 plus 4. So let's say I'm chaining 10 um, for this example. So then it tells you to proceed making row number 4. The type of row that I am calling row 4 is not literally your row 4, but uh, in terms of the kinds of and the types of rows you can find in this pattern, this is the fourth type of row. So, you've chained and you turn. And the row force tells you to double crochet into the fifth chain from hook. One, two, three, four, five. So, double crochet. And uh, when it comes to the chain, of course, um, don't just do what you usually do in the chain, whether you put your, insert your hook through both or one or two loops. Just what you usually do for your convenience. Doesn't matter. So you've turned, you're facing the back of your work uh, in the main uh, body, the main piece, the main section. And um, double, then it tells it double crochet in the next stitch. And then double crochet in the chain before the first double crochet. So you've just made yourself a double crochet post uh, replacement plus the cluster. So this looks like a good beginning um, of the row just like before. And uh, now we're simply uh, repeating. So we're skipping the next stitch and double crocheting the next stitch twice. And then we're going back to the skipped stitch and making a double crochet into that. Now when you are about to crochet into the main piece you will notice that your stitches are not quite um, uh, aligned but just don't pay attention to that um, it has to happen so 
the pieces are not exactly um, these clusters are not exactly aligned but you, you're not gonna notice it in, in the cardigan it's just for the ease of um, of making this pattern I try to make this as easy as I can think of so simply ignore what's what the transition is here and just continue with the repeat skip the next stitch and oh but of course now you're um it, so i should have said that the pattern was telling you all along to double crochet front loop only but we're not paying attention to the kinds of loops at first while we're still in the chain but then it's a double crochet front loop only And double crochet in the skip stitch and in this case it's a chain so uh, any uh, loop or loops will do and simply complete the row okay so this is a, a little bit different ending to row number four so when you come to the end of the row you might think that there's something wrong because you don't seem to have enough stitches to complete the row but what you have to do is still skip one stitch and crochet um, so um, what you see is to clarify looking uh, from the front you see that there is two stitches left plus the chain two so this row is a little bit different so we are crocheting we're skipping the next stitch we're crocheting into the uh, last stitch uh, front loop only and to the top of chain two and we are now going back to the skip stitch and our, this is the last stitch of the row is the one that's crossing over the existing two double crochets we are not ending with a, a post like previously but we're ending with a cluster this is how it's supposed to be and don't get spooked if that's what you get so now you've finished row number four and then it tells you that you need to chain a certain amount of chains which is a multiple of three so uh, let's say I'm doing nine so chain the number that tells you and then turn then we're on to row type and number five so it tells you to double crochet into the fifth chain from hook one two three four Again, any loop, double crochet in the next stitch, and double crochet in the chain before the first double crochet. Skip the next stitch and double crochet in the next stitch twice. crochet in the skip stitch so when you are about to join the main part of your back piece now you can see that you have uh, aligned perfectly with this cluster because you are supposed to skip uh, one and double crochet in the last two of the cluster so that's where you are and that's why we did it because we don't need this post here because this lace um, just goes on top of each other so cluster after cluster so we skip the next stitch and we double crochet and no front loop no back loop just double crochet in the next stitch twice which is has to be the last two stitches of the cluster below and double crochet in the skip stitch 
and keep going. And we're simply transitioning into the sleeve part smoothly. And this row ends properly with a double crochet to the top of chain 3 from the last row. So this is row 5 complete. And now you're on to row 6. Row 6 is chain 3. Turn and this counts as a double crochet. Skip crocheting in the same stitch and the next stitch and um, double crochet in the next two stitches. That is because we want to uh, align ourselves with this cluster. So we have to make two double crochets in the last two uh, stitches of the cluster. And double crochet in the skip stitch. And repeat. Skip one, double crochet in the next stitch twice, and double crochet in the skip stitch. And again, the end of row six is a double crochet to the top of chain three. So, and the pattern tells you to repeat row six, the one we just made, until you have a certain amount of rows in the top section, counting on the left when facing the front. So the front is when we made the row number one, as we're making it, we're facing the front and also where all the ridges are. What I mean by counting on the left when facing the front, um, I just mean counting here. So I need three rows, for example. Um, it's just, it's just, I thought that would be the easiest way to count how many rows you've made in the top section. Just count uh, right here. Um, so what you noticed probably is that you have a slightly uh, skewed um, shape and you have uh, more rows on the left than you have on the right. Um, but just stick with that because when you make the front pieces the other piece that you make at the front will offset uh, the difference uh, at the back so your your sleeves will be the same size don't worry about that it's just for the ease of the pattern it's easier to make it that way so back piece complete now on to the front piece on the left front piece so the pattern will tell you chain a certain amount of uh, chains which will be again a multiple of three so i know this is a bit ridiculous but let's say i do six and it tells you to complete the bottom section just like before so follow the bottom section pattern which was row one then row two, then row three, and then repeat rows two and three until you have a certain amount of rows. I know this is a little bit ridiculous, but I just want to show you the most important part, which is the transitioning from how do you make the uh, chains and the sleeves and what the rows look like, what the workflow will look like for you. So I've already made a cardigan, so uh, that's why... I'm just making little pieces just to show you how the pattern works. I hope you don't mind. So once, so we're making the left front piece. And once you complete the bottom section, it will tell you to chain a certain amount of rows, which is a multiple of three. So I'm doing nine. And then you turn. And, okay, row number seven. Double crochet in the fifth chain from hook. One, two, three, four, five. Double crochet in the next stitch. And double crochet in the chain before the first double crochet. Skip the next chain and double crochet in the next stitch twice. 
and as you are um, transitioning into the main um, body of the piece you remember just to make the pokashi front loop only so the pokashi is front loop only <clears throat> in every stitch while uh, sticking to the pattern repeat so the last stitch of row row seven is a double crochet in double crochet in the last stitch which is just before the chain two and now we're repeating row six until you have a certain amount of rows in the top section so the pattern will tell you to repeat row six until you have a certain amount of rows counting on the left which will be the same number as you ha had while making the main back piece so therefore if you lay your pieces one on top of each other while you're facing the front of them both uh, that will be the same kind of uh, rows and thickness on this side and uh, now to make the right front piece um, chain um, again the same kind of multiple of three is for the left piece and uh, tell the complete bottom section so um, that's what I did so you'll be at the same point you were when you completed the bottom section here however this is the right piece so you need to uh, end up being on this side hence the next what we're gonna do next is repeating row two but we're not making the last post um the last double crochet so we're repeating row two and we're actually after the last cluster when you're you you would be um, due to make a post in the last stitch we're not gonna do that it's just easier to um, omit something than to write a whole new uh, row or change the kind of row so I just said repeat row 2 and skip making the last post and then when you seam at the end of the day everything looks the same so there is no need to over complicate things to keep it simple just skip uh, completing row 2 and then it tells you uh, chain a certain amount of chains which is a multiple of three so I will do nine and we're turning and we're repeating row five and then repeat row six so the pattern tells you repeat row six until you have a certain amount of rows um, counting on the right it, because I think it's easier to count uh, right here then um, anywhere else to make the belt you need to crochet a multiple of three plus four in the uh, foundation chain and and basically follow uh, the pattern of row five so because you'll be chaining in the fifth chain from hook and then making clusters and then making uh, a a post um, in the last stitch and to make the edging I started at the bottom so pick a, a point to start I always make the trimmings and drippings when I'm facing the front of the work so say you start here and then you keep going along the bottom edge and then the front so the way I did it was um, I joined the yarn with a slip stitch and uh, join so make a slip knot on your hook and then insert the hook into where you want to start and simply um, take that yarn tail and tuck it behind and then yarn over and pull through 
the yarn through the slip knot and then you've done your new yarn so I begin I just go straight to making the trebles so for the bottom edge we are yarning over twice for the treble and look at your um, stitch alignment in relation to the cluster so we need to allocate these three stitches that correspond to the cluster three stitches and you make the first treble and the first of the cluster stitches and then another treble in the next stitch another treble in the next stitch and then you're making a slip stitch in between these posts where another set of three stitches corresponding to the um, cluster begins so just a slip stitch and again yarn over twice and go straight into a treble in the next stitch three times and then again just make a slip stitch in between um, these two posts where your first three stitches ended and just before the other three um, begin and that's how you keep going for the uh, bottom edging so when you reach the corner you simply end with a slip stitch either in the same space or maybe a space just before the first post begins and then when you turn just locate your first post of the first row and then you have half double crochet post and double crochet post half double crochet and, and etc so just continue um for example i'm due to make uh, trebles so i'm gonna make all three trebles behind the first post and then when it comes to the next post i simply make a, a slip stitch in the next r row and then three trebles and uh, behind the post of the next row so it goes like this um three trebles behind the first post then a slip stitch uh, behind the post of the next row then three trebles behind the post of the next row and three trebles slip stitch three trebles slip stitch and keep going and going and again uh, the kind of lace slightly changes but the pattern of your edging doesn't change uh, you are still so this was a slip knot in every HTC row but it doesn't matter and um, here you just have three trebles and then slip knot in the next space three trebles slip knot in the next space keep going with the same kind of pattern um, and then just when you reach the the neck area uh, do your best uh, matching your three uh, trebles with a cluster the three cluster stitches so they kind of correspond and then make a slip knot in between the clusters and keep going and that's pretty much it and you uh, reach the place where you started and the corners kind of look like this so you kind of have uh, these um, you have a slip stitch in the corner and then two uh, sets of trebles on either side and so when you make your cardigan and uh, put it on and kind of see if you want a belt and where you want the belt to sit I like it to sit kind of uh, around my waist uh, under the, the, the chest so find the, the row that you like 
choose the row with the clusters because that's uh, very easy to uh, put uh, to lace your uh, belt through in between these clusters and um, what I did is I simply laced it through um, the front but I actually left it um, like this at the back a bit like a, a house coat, a bathrobe because I thought that would be quite cool um, not to keep lacing at the back and have that nice uh, belt uh, showing uh, at the back complete lacing the belt at the front so uh, that's it for today uh, have a nice day bye